All right, uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the uh, the leather that I use uh, while stropping and, you know, the kinds of leather that I use for making my strops. I've had quite a few people ask me to, you know, talk about this, you know, make a video, so I thought I'd go ahead and do that. Um, as far as the what you see here on the table, I've got three different species, basically. This is uh, a kangaroo. It's a two-ounce kangaroo. It's a veg tan. This is equiner or horsehide. This is the uh, strip portion of the right in front of the shell area on the horse or on the hind end. Um, this is both of these are uh, bovine or cow. This one is a, a soling leather. It's been compressed during the tanning process, and this is just regular old eight nine ounce cowhide. Um, for stropping, I primarily and I recommend you stick with veg tan. You know, there's lots of different tannages out there, and that's just what they use in the tanning process. You know, there's chrome tan, combination tanned, you get milled, pasted, glazed, oils, waxes. I would I would stay away from all of those. I would, I would like I said, I would just stay with the uh, the vegetable tan leathers. Um, when it comes to stropping, you're going to be faced with you know basically one of two different sides you're going to be using. Uh, for this video, I'm going to be talking primarily on the uh, the smooth or the grain side. On leather, you have the smooth or the grain side or the hair side. That's the portion that's facing away from the animal's insides, you know, the internal organs. The uh, part that's flesh, it's got kind of a, you know, the fibery texture to it. Call it the suede side, whatever you want. That's the part that's facing towards the inside of the animal, towards the animal's uh, internal. Uh, over the years, I've heard a lot of people talking about, you know, in videos and different forums and whatnot, about silicates, the size of silicates, the level of silicates. Some leathers have larger size silicates than other leathers and all that stuff. And silicates whether you know in organic form it doesn't really matter if it's in wood or leather I mean you get silicates in your hand you know you might have seen some of the old timers like uh, oh god I can't think of his name I'll put it in the video if I remember it but you've seen some of the guys stropping on their hand I mean you've got uh, you know silicates in your hand it's just silicates in something like leather are much more abundant you know leather is going to be denser than than your skin so it's just in theory your skin will produce the same results it'll just take much much longer than it would on something like a good piece of leather um, some of the big difference differences between the different leather is uh, you know the grain structure the compressibility and also you know the thickness uh, kangaroo is not particularly dense but it's very thin so when you put it on a hard backing it doesn't leave a lot of room for it to compress but it doesn't matter what leather you're using there it's going to compress somewhat just something like a regular veg tan cowhide is going to have a lot more compressibility than something that's been cased and rolled at the you know during the tanning process or if you've done it yourself I mean, this is stuff is like it's like wood but it's still it will compress a little bit Um, and when it comes to the compressibility of leathers, you know, if, if you're using, you know, something that has, you know, more give to it, and when you're stropping, if you think about it, you, when you press down and basically preload the leather, and that leather springs up and has a tendency to round that edge, what are you doing to that very fine apex when you're stropping? You're working it back and forth, stretching it, and basically stressing the steel too so that's one of the reasons I like to use uh, a much denser leather than something that's got kind of a squishy you know a little bit more you know, compressibility to it than regular cowhide if you do use something like a regular cowhide just use lighter pressure um, in my opinion the, the best leather you can get for stropping is something like this soling leather now, like I said, these two are basically the same. They both have the same tannage. They're veg tan, but during the tanning process, this leather is put through an extra process. It's basically called casing. It's they have a big table 
and there's a big steel platform and it's got a, a big wheel that basically rolls back and forth over the leather when it's wet. And when veg tan leather is wet, it becomes almost malleable. It's kind of like a clay in a sense. And the, you roll it and roll it and roll it, and it just gets compressed and compressed and compressed. And it gets to the point where it, it's so tough, you literally you can't cut it with even a utility knife. I, when I make straps out of this stuff, whether it's for myself or for somebody else, uh, I use a bandsaw. I mean, this stuff is just ridiculously tough. And, you know, it gets the name, you know, soling leather because that's what it's for. It's made for soling shoes. You know, they don't use it that much these days except for custom shoemakers and whatnot. But if you think about it, if you take a regular old piece of veg tan and you put that on the bottom of your, suit, your shoe as a sole and you go walking down the street, how long is it going to last? Probably not very long. This stuff will last for years on a shoe it, it, just because it is so tough. Um, this is probably the hardest leather to come across especially a good quality soling leather so if you know if you're in the market and you don't want to try some I mean you can you can look I, you know you can ask me and uh, you know I'll, I'll try and get back to you and see if I can help you find some but getting it outside of the US is pretty hard there's uh, a couple couple tanneries that will sell it but it's just in pretty large quantities you know in excess of a thousand dollars so um, Another alternative, and I plan on making a video on the process of this, is basically taking regular old veg tan, casing it, and working it yourself. It basically involves running a decent quality veg tan under running tap water, letting it sit for a bit. Once it sits, like I said, the, the water basically it soaks into the leather and the leather fibers, and it, it almost becomes malleable in a sense. And basically, after it sits a bit, you'll get something flat, you know, maybe a piece of glass, uh, granite, whatever you got. Yeah, you, know, you can use a glass counter, you know, your tabletop, whatever. As long as it's flat and clean. And you'll take something like a rolling pin, or what I like to use is a uh, galvanized pipe, and I filled it with birdshot, number eight birdshot, for, you know, for shotguns. And, uh, you know, it's 15 plus pounds, and I'll sit there and I'll roll it back and forth. If you roll it for 10 or 15 minutes, that makes a really, really good leather. Just basically rolling it, rolling it, rolling it, and flipping it back and forth and working and compressing it. If you do it for 20 or 30 minutes longer, it even makes an even better leather. And then after you're done rolling it, you just basically set that aside. And for, you know, at least four or five days, I normally wait seven to ten days for it to fully dry. And then just use some type of adhesive and, the, you know, stick it on a piece of wood or whatever you want and it makes a really really good strop after you do that two reasons you know two of the reasons one has much less compressibility it's very firm and also when you work a veg tan leather like that and you case it it tends to migrate the silicates to the surface so you, if you're using it bare it works much better it's faster it won't give you better results it's just faster than regular veg tan and the, uh, you know, like I said, it's going to be less compressible. Keep in mind, if you take any kind of abrasive and put it on there, then the, the, uh, the level of silicates is kind of a moot point after that. It's not going to matter once you put abrasives on there. So, um, Another thing I've been asked several times, you know, how much pressure I use when I'm using, these, you know, whether it's wood or leather or anything like that. A general rule of thumb is the more refined an edge is, the less pressure I use. If I'm like a 400 or 600 grit, I'll tend to use more pressure. If I'm using, you know, if I'm off a 5,000 stone or something really fine, I tend to use much, much lighter pressure. But, you know, there's a lot of different scenarios, you know, you can go over in that when it comes to how much pressure you're using. But in general, that's what I like to use. What I'm going to do is take a small sample here, if I can find my knife. just want to give you a quick demonstration. This is a pretty sharp utility knife, fairly new blade. I'm going to give you an example of how tough some of these different leathers are compared to a regular old veg tan. This is just regular veg tan, 8, 9 ounce. You can see it cuts out like nothing. Now this isn't, this is a fairly firm temper horse hide, not super 
tough or super super dense, but it's you know it's up there. And you can see how tough that is. I mean that stuff is crazy tough. That's about as much force as I can use to cut that. This right here is the same stuff. I don't want to chop up a new piece. This is some pieces of this soling leather. And I'll give you an idea how tough this stuff is. <sighs> About to break the blade on this. Yeah, like I said, I used a, a bandsaw when I cut this because I barely, you know, made it about a quarter of the way in there or so, maybe halfway. Any more force than that, I'm going to be snapping the blade off on this thing. Probably won't pick it up too well, but you can see the, the green structure on this. You can see this stuff is just much looser than than this stuff. This is just super, super compressed. The fibers in here, you know, there's very, very little give. Very stiff, and this stuff is just just squishy and mushy. But anyways, that's just a little information on on the few different leathers that I use. Uh, I hope to help answer some questions. Uh, if you have any questions at all, you know, feel free to ask away, and I'll. I'll do what I can to get back to you. Alright, thanks for watching.